Hey everybody, welcome to another video review. Um, it seems like the last couple of reviews have been uh, Sideshow Weta Lord of the Rings or Weta Lord of the Rings, sort of like a blast from the past. Um, these are all very old collectibles. And following that trend, um, this new entry is gonna be another one from the Lord of the Rings. So this is the original Sideshow Weta Cave Troll from the Fellowship of the Ring, the Two Towers. This is number 405 out of 750. I just wanted to kind of get that out of the way before I forgot that. Um, and there's a lot, of, a lot to talk about um, in this piece. So we should just kind of get started. I'm recording this at 4K, 60 frames a second. Every time I do this, I always have to kind of figure out um, what's going to happen with the macro view. You know, this is iPhone 15. This is I'm still, still kind of working the bugs out of this bad boy. But I think at this at this distance, you get some pretty nice, um, you know, 4K level, you know, detail sharpness. Another thing that's kind of lame is that I, I upload to YouTube and it doesn't upload in 4K. I don't know what the deal is, why the processing is really slow or whatever, but you know, there's something I don't understand. And you know, sometimes when I upload, it uploads in 4K, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so I, that's something I just kind of have to figure out a little bit later on. Kind of showing you um, the cave troll's face. As you can see, if I go really, really close, see that? Kind of sucks, it blurs. So this is about as close as I can get before the blur hits. But at this point here, it's still actually 4K. Uh, so a little bit of an overview. Um, I've talked about, you know, SciShow Weta pieces before. So uh, this was a collaboration between SciShow Collectibles and uh, Weta. Back when Weta was a new special effects company, they were working on you know, the Lord of the Rings trilogy and they decided to work with SciShow to create these collectibles. Um, this is one of the holy grails of the line. Uh, in general, there are uh, three pieces uh, acknowledged to be, you know, holy grails from that those original sideshow weather days. Um, and the three of them are all uh, limited edition pieces. Uh, it's the original Balrog of Moria, the so-called Daddy Rog, a limited edition of 1,000. And then the Witch King of Ogmar, um, also limited edition of 1000 and then finally this guy right here the cave troll limited edition of 750 now while there was some controversy about a large batch of artist proofs for the Balrog of Moria and some talk of recasting or you know kind of hidden extras at the factory um, there's been, to the best of my knowledge, no such controversy or rumors over either the Witch King or the uh, Cave Troll uh, statues. So pretty legit. And because of the Cave Troll, um, it, you know, well, being limited to only 750 over the decades, I can't believe I'm saying that over the decades, um, this piece has become extraordinarily rare. Um, probably way more likely to find a Balrog than a cave troll in good shape, let's just say, okay? Um, and so it's the year is 2024. The Two Towers was released in 2002. The Fellowship of the Ring, I believe, was released in 2001. And so conservatively, you know, this piece is um, at least 20 to 20, 22, 21 to 22 years old, most likely even, um, I would say, you know, 23 years old. So you're looking at a statue um, that is over two decades old. Um, so you can imagine that there's a lot of differences in terms of how statues were made back in the day, um, the sophistication, the paint application, the art direction, the design, those are all you know, very different and much, much more uh, basic, okay? Now, you know, this is a massive piece. I'm gonna put my 
hand on the club right here. So you, can, you have an idea, you know, using my hand as a sort of, um, you know, a sense of scale, how huge this is. The cave troll is one sixth scale. And this is the original one, the one that was sought after by so many people. And due to, you know, the, the cave troll's kind of grail status, um, sideshow, what a, did make another cave troll, not a cave troll, but they made another troll, um, a battle troll from Return of the King. And that one was the one that was kind of like, you know, from the siege of Minas Tirith. But it was very disappointing. Um, I never bothered even buying it. And the reason for that is because they made it so much smaller. You know, this thing is massive. It's one six scale. But the uh, battle troll from Minas Tirith is you know, quite a bit smaller. There was also like a, a snow version. I don't know if it was from a video game or not. Again, um, suffering from that lack of size. And while size isn't everything for a creature, a monster like the cave troll, um, you just lose a lot of the presence uh, when you make it too small. And so finally, uh, recently, about a year or two ago, I think 2021, 22, for the 20th anniversary of the Fellowship of the Ring, um, Weta, no longer, you know, with Sideshow, finally released a worthy cave troll and from the Fellowship of the Ring. And I have a review of that, of course. Um, that one was is much more, um, you know, obtainable uh, and uh, has the Moria Orcs running in front and the Moria Orc on the back of the cave troll. And they finally did one, I think, that, you know, did can, that does justice to the actual troll itself. And in many respects, you know, I, I felt was superior to this one. Uh, but of course, I've never owned one in person. And so now I have a chance to do a video review and give you my thoughts to see if I really do think that the new version is better than this old classic, this OG grail, so to speak, original grail, OG, okay? So, um, you know, that's a little bit of the history of the cave troll. How did I get this piece? Um, well, uh, I just got very lucky. The same gentleman who sold me the Weta Treebeard Masters collection uh, essentially has been collecting just all sorts of awesome things for the past several decades. Uh, you know, he has in his storage locker and at home just amazing, amazing pieces. You know, pieces that, um, you know, catch my attention and I've wanted for a long, long time. And so as it happened, you know, he kindly just sent me a text because of our previous relationship and just said, hey, you know, you're obviously a huge Lord of the Rings fan. You bought the tree beard from me. And, you know, he said that I was looking into maybe moving this cave troll and would I be interested? And of course, you know, the rest is history. I had previously, uh, from a completely separate connection, managed to finally get uh, an original, you know, Sideshow Weta, Balrog, Amoria. And I didn't really have much hope of finding one of these guys, you know. And so for that to drop into my lap, you know, we bargained a little bit, we, we talked a little bit, he had to find a few things. By the end, you know, we came together uh, to an arrangement uh, for a very fair price, in my opinion. And uh, most importantly, because he lives local to me, um, you know, the cave troll didn't have to be shipped, which is extraordinarily important. Uh, and that's the next thing that we're going to talk about. So, you know, he actually this time drove over two and a half hours, um, you know, to drop off this beauty at my house. You know, we got to talk about collecting. It was always wonderful to meet a fellow collector, obviously. I showed him my collection. We had a nice dinner, you know, kind of talked about just a lot of things in general, especially about these pieces. Um, and so I was just like over the moon, happy with it that again it was um, able to be placed uh, in my in my hands, you know, directly without any type of sh uh, shipping. And I'm going to segue that from that into one of the things about this piece that makes it even more rare is um, that there is a situation where um, right around here. A lot of these cave trolls had the arm snap right off. Essentially, the entire um, uh, arm here snaps in half and breaks. The reason is because 
And once you actually break this arm and you actually analyze it, you'll see that up to the shoulder, the head, a lot of the body, it's a little bit more solid. And then this piece here is very solid, solid. And then right here, this is hollow cast where um, literally, you know, there are some parts around this arm where the thickness of the casting is less than a millimeter. Okay, so we have a hollow cast arm here and then you have weight here and weight here. And in the styrofoam packaging, he's literally uh, laid into the, you know, the, the, the foam uh, divot, you know, uh, the foam space. Uh, any type of um, impact during shipping can immediately crack this. Uh, and there's varying degrees. Sometimes you just have a hairline fracture or sometimes the entire arm is snapped apart. Um, there are actually little subtle things in the packaging that tries to immobilize the arm and give it a little bit more support. And I feel like sometimes a lot of the damage occurs when um, the cave toe perhaps is improperly packed. Now, to be clear, even if um, you pack it perfectly, there is a very high chance it could break anyway. But if you don't pack it perfectly, um, then, you know, of course, that risk skyrockets. And so... Uh, this is kind of an amazing situation where this cave troll, uh, remember there was only 750 to begin with, and uh, over the years I've seen, I would say at least 10 to 15 of them with the broken arm, either broken on eBay or various paint masters would uh, do little tutorials on how they fixed it. Uh, for instance, Vincent, uh, you know, on YouTube just recently uh, uh, did one, uh, and uh, Rick Contu, you know, did one as well. One of the first ones I remember seeing on statueform.com. But a lot of, you know, um, you know, paint masters have repaired that arm because it's such a common break. And of course, I've seen ones on eBay that have tried to move them. At least in the old days, you hardly see them anymore on eBay for any type of price. But I was able to, you know, obviously um, over the decades see quite a few of them with a broken arm. And so obviously this cave troll has never, ever had it broken. I can come really, really close. I can see, um, you know, that this is absolutely fine. Um, you know, he was the original owner from Sai Showeta, so he didn't buy it from another collector. Um, and so the lineage is very clear, and of course he never um, broke that arm. And so this is one of the, in my opinion, the rarer, the more rare um, Sai Showeta cave trolls that uh, has never had that arm broken or repaired, uh, which is nice. I mean, it's not like anything's, it's any, you know, it's not like there's anything bad uh, just because they repair it. Oftentimes after being professionally repaired, uh, you can't tell at all that anything has been done and they do uh, fill the hollow cast arm and, you know, put screws and, and rod, metal rod, um, you know, support so that it's actually better than the original. But again, in terms of, um, you know, something that's never been touched or repaired, it's nice to have a cave troll like that. And so I do have one of them where the arm is, uh, you know, is pristine. So <clears throat> with that out of the way, uh, let's take a look at um, sort of the the base. So as with a lot, all of the side show the pieces, back in the day, the base is actually uh, overlooking a map of Beleriand. And in this case, uh, most of the, the black map is covered uh, by you know, the rock and, and the flooring. So you can kind of still see though, uh, the compass and little bits of the, um, of the map. You see, here's Belagar or Belagare, is it? B-E-L-E-G-A-E-R, yeah, Bele Belagare. Um, it's one of the lands. So it's kind of cool, again, that the black base represents the, the map, and then you have, of course, little pieces of the base overlying it. Um, it's also kind of interesting that two of the greatest monsters in the Lord of the Rings were both introduced in the Mines of Moria. You know, first with that amazing um, battle against the orcs and the cave troll, followed almost immediately, before you even have a chance to catch your breath, with the chase scene and then the final confrontation against the Balrog, um, you know, on the bridge of Khazad Doom. And so it is kind of, uh, I, don't know, I don't know, I just think it's kind of amazing that again, uh, these two are introduced so close to each other. Um, so the base is obviously from the Mines of Moria. 
you have this very, very uh, nice skull again. I mean, it's sculpted poly, uh, poly stone, but um, you know, definitely uh, very, very nicely detailed. I can't get too close without, um, again, blurring. And you have this kind of isolated bone uh, right here, you know, probably a, I don't know whether it's a humerus or a femur. It looks like a humerus, um, maybe a little bit too small for a, a leg bone. But yeah, a little scattered bones here, a skull over here. And then this is actually the depression uh, and the, the groove where the huge, um, you know, mace actually sits. Um, in terms of how he's uh, placed, again, this is a 21, 22 year old statue. All of the engineering was all very new and crude. So he literally has actually uh, two, you know, metal um, pins about yay big. Uh, and there's two of them, and then you have to slot them perfectly um, into the holes in the each of the legs. And the hilarious thing is that um, the pins are not very large. You know, like these days, they're all pegs, not even pins. They're literally pins, like, you know, maybe a millimeter in diameter. And the hole in the legs are also a millimeter in diameter. It's extremely difficult to actually put it um, in position, and you actually have to, like, you know, literally like almost get down to here so you know and then you you hold him up and you actually you know very very carefully line up each one of these and then slide it um the vast majority of these cave trolls will have scratches on the bottom of the feet because of how hard it is you know literally to put them in um so yeah just kind of another sort of almost a historical um you know observation about how these were very crudely engineered and it's just so much more um, you know, user-friendly, so to speak, these days uh, when you're putting these guys together. Uh, finally, another thing, in terms of um, sophistication, uh, the same thing these days, you know, all of these will be in pieces, in different uh, sections. And you know, back in those days, they didn't really do that. They didn't think about it. And so if you can imagine, this cave troll just came in one huge piece. The, the, the mace attached to the arm, that's it. You know, the legs, the whole body, um, he doesn't get taken apart. And that's, kind of, again, kind of the major reason why there were so many broken uh, you know, forearms because of that. Um, if they were, had been able to key this cave troll in a somewhat reasonable fashion, uh, at the very least get rid of the head of this gigantic mace, then I think that the um, incidence of uh, break would be much, much less. And for their 20th anniversary uh, release of the other cave troll, they did learn from that. Um, you know, that cave troll had a very different pose, uh, but at least this um, you know, stone um, mace, the head was actually you know, packaged separately, and then you basically slotted it onto the shaft over here. Um, so that was definitely a design improvement, um, you know, born from experience from this. So uh, there you have it. Now let's just take a look sort of at the actual sculpt itself. Um, I always thought, you know, when I uh, looked at pictures of this on eBay and on the various forums, it's just hard to say because you don't have a very good sense of uh, scale. Uh, I have a better idea because you know, before I even bought this, I had the other version, right? The more recent release. So I have some idea of how large it was. Um, but in person, it's, it's a really nice piece. I mean, this is actually way bigger than the Balrog of Moria. It seems like it is true one sixth scale. And so, you know, here again, my hand covering the head, you know, covering the arms. Um, this is definitely, you know, very, very, um, you know, sizable for sure. Um, so definitely like that massive club. The sculpt done very, very well. And I especially like the fact that, you know, they actually sco uh, sculpted sort of the, the folds of his uh, belly and his chest. You can kind of almost see the nipple over here and he's twisting his body and you can see kind of the folds of uh, skin and flesh also 
reflect that sort of dynamic action. So let me kind of take a look here. You know, so there's the belly button all the way over here, in case you missed it. And he's kind of you know twisting his body to look at you toward his left. And uh, it, you know, they just did a really, really nice job um, showing you the texture and the folds of the skin and how that the, how those folds would naturally look if he turns you know that direction. Um, he has just like a really, really nice pose. And then you have kind of this arm, you know, flung back. Now, that's one of the downsides or one of the criticisms of the statue is that it's kind of awkward to display because of this left arm that it's just, just sort of randomly flung backward. And, um, you know, maybe if, you had, if they had just made the arm move a little bit lower or done something else with it, it would just be a lot more uh, friendly uh, in terms of display. Uh, I also find it rather amusing that after 20 years, they finally had a chance to improve the pose to make it a little bit more uh, friendly and then they created um, a cave troll where this arm was you know, placed in a much more space friendly manner but then the right arm was basically flung back around the other side in much the same way as here but because he's carrying the mace it's even more you know, um, you know takes up even more space and so they replaced essentially um, one cave troll with the left arm is sort of you know awkwardly flung back with the cave troll with the right arm holding the mace awkwardly flung back. So uh, I thought that was kind of funny whether the weather team was trolling us or not with the pose of that cave troll. I don't know, but overall um, it, it has a very sort of like powerful pose. Like you know when you see this thing and then you kind of take a look at the base and you sort of see the shattered rock where he just pounded it. You can you know clearly see where it's sunken into the ground and the rubble around it um, and sort of him walking, you can feel the mass. Like this, this cave troll definitely gives you a very um, powerful sense of mass, of weight. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I quite enjoy that. Uh, we can take a look at the texturing. So it just kind of reminds you of a, rhino, a rhinoceros or an elephant, like a pachyderm. Um, you can see kind of a lot of the, the striations and the texture on the back of the cave troll, all the way from the, the foot. And it almost, you know, feels, uh, he feels like you know, all of this is just like these hard, um, you know, like almost like the back of uh, rocks, right? They look like rocks, believe it or not. You know, same thing here, so you can kind of see the the, um, the, there's almost like natural armor right on the back reminds me of a turtle right or a snail or something like that but then on the undersurface there's these wrinkles you can see as it gets to the arms and the hands um, these you know pebbly um, armor type of pattern sort of changes right around the elbow and you can kind of see more skin folds more wrinkles things like that I never knew he only had three fingers but uh, of course he does. But he has one of those fingers is like a thumb. So that's what allows him to grab the mace. And then here you kind of have an appreciation of the detail of the nails. You know, very, very rough and dirty. Let's take a look over here. You see the kind of the gnarled nails, you know. Look at that, take a look at the nails of the feet as well. And then another issue, uh, another thing that's kind of interesting is that the undersurface of the, uh, the undersurface of the, the troll, of course, is way softer. Again, you can kind of see the flesh and the skin folds. And I think that's how, um, yeah, that is how they kill him, right? They actually spear him um, no, 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 they, they don't spear him. Yeah, yeah, Legolas basically puts an arrow through his head. Um, although I think they do hurt him with a spear, with that big, huge you know, spear after they thought that he had killed Frodo. Um, they kind of hurt him, distract him, and they put an arrow through his head by Legolas. But you can clearly see, um, you know, kind of the design element where you can clearly see how much more vulnerable he is at the bottom, right here, here's that shot, versus 
you know, the back, you can see the tough, you know, the tough little uh, sections. It feels like rock, essentially. You can definitely see that, you know, he's a lot more hardy. Um, in terms of clothes, you know, he just has this type of thing. Now, this is not removable. The new cave troll, this thing can be taken off. Again, you know, just better design, try to reduce the chances of breakage. But this is, you know, this gives you the texture of, I think, even like a leather, right? With the studs, right, over here. And you can kind of see the belt just beautifully sculpted and painted to give you that illusion of um, leather. And then in the front, it's kind of hard to see. But I'll show you right here. You can see that's the front. There, that's a good shot. Is that that's the front of um, of his clothes? Okay. And again, in the uh, second, more recent cave troll, released for the twentieth anniversary, um, you can actually take that off. But here you can't. So there is, of course, risk that this breaks. For instance, now the new cave troll actually showed the uh, the genitals, and you can clearly see it. And I was just curious um, if the old one actually had it as well and so um, you can't really tell I don't think from here but uh, basically this little structure right here uh, that is indeed his his genitals you know and so even back in 2001 when they were scoping the cave troll you know Weta's commitment to accuracy um, you know was the, even there it was uh, on full display it was a, a part of the cave troll that no one would normally think to check, but they made it anatomically correct, even back then. So, um, you know, the the old Weta has no uh, no need for any shame. They were just as good as the new version 20 years later. That attention to detail still is there. Uh, taking a look at the cave troll's face, uh, absolutely beautiful. You can see that the teeth they actually they have, uh, sculpted the inside of the mouth. So you can actually see the tongue and the floor of the mouth, the gum line. And of course, his eyes are very widely spaced apart. And there's his like, you know, sort of a button nose almost recessed in there. You know, he's growling. Look at the small ear holes on the side. And so the overall uh, picture that you would get from this troll is that, you know, he's just not a very smart troll. I mean, he just looks a little bit dull, right? A little bit, um, you know, not very uh, sharp, so to speak. And of course, that's what trolls are known for. They're not known for being very, very smart. So it's, again, a very, very interesting um, design choice to sculpt him with the eyes kind of far apart and his mouth open. He looks angry, but he doesn't look particularly smart. So I thought that was actually um, pretty interesting. I don't know what this black stuff is. Maybe like orc blood or something like that, strewn all over the place. You can see sort of the metal, um, you know, the metal, you know, like this collar around it, and uh, the spikes are broken off. So the other um, newer cave troll, I should call it what anniversary cave troll. So that one, the spikes are you know much much more pronounced, and of course the uh, Moria orc is actually riding. Uh, the cave troll and over here you can see that this is sort of the broken uh, link uh, the broken uh, chain that was used to control him so you know he's kind of like out of control now uh, and again in the anniversary cave troll uh, this chain would be all the way up top and there was like a long chain in the hands of the Moria orc again uh, I encourage you to check my uh, review out so you can see all that detail so in this case um, he's sort of broken free of those of his handler, and so that chain is just sort of uh, the remnant of it. Um, you know, it should go from here all the way back up, but it's being snapped in half, and uh, the remnant is just kind of hanging around the collar. So this is a cave troll that is uh, definitely not being controlled. Uh, who knows? Maybe he killed his handlers, and so he's just kind of wild, going through, doing his thing. You know, so. There you have it. In terms of the paint job, again, um, this is an older piece. And so there's not a whole lot of sophistication, you know, to the paint. Um, the base is very serviceable. This is, of course, a huge piece of rock. The texturing is done very nicely. They're doing washes of gray, 
Um, the same thing here, you know, in the sense that you know it's predominantly gray, but there's a lot of subtle shading, uh, little tiny, you know, um, pieces of white, um, and just like the striations, uh, all have to be sort of uh, textured and painted. And then of course, on the very very back, you have these um, you know stone pebbly uh, things. I don't even know what to call these. Uh, I'm trying to think of the better word to describe the back. It's like cobblestone, right? Yeah, it's like a cobblestone. And he's got like these, this cobblestone, hard cobblestone shell. And again, if you go close enough, you can sort of see again the texturing and the, you know, it, it just looks like dust, right? Like caking the back of this cobblestone street, but it's actually the, the cave troll's actual skin all the way down here. So yeah, you know, this guy is basically gray, but I'm hoping that as I'm showing you some of the close-ups, you can sort of understand that he's not just all gray. There is a lot of difference. Again, there's more um, like a pale washed out color uh, at the bottom versus the heavier grays on the back. So this is like something again with a lot of reptiles where, or no, like alligators or snakes, um, where their belly is always gonna be lighter colors than their um, backside, uh, their so-called, you know, ventral surface. So there you have it. We talked about the pose. So yeah, I mean, I would say that the paint here is uh, serviceable. It's certainly not very, very uh, complicated, but neither would you expect a piece like this to be that complicated. Um, this was 20 plus years old. And so they have very, very um, you know, rudimentary uh, shades of colors. Um, you know, same thing with even the ball rock. The original daddy rock, when you have it in person, is just basically you know shades of red and orange alternating with almost like black and so these paint jobs in the old days you know they're okay but just not extremely ambitious uh, but i hope you'll agree as i you know turn them on my turntable that um it's quite good enough so to speak and again they do have a little bit of gloss on the teeth i think and the tongue just to give it that air of realism i think they did a great job with the eyes so you know, there you have it. It's a little bit surreal because, um, you know, when you've thought about this grail for so long and you didn't think that you would ever own one, and then finally after like 22 years to have this piece finally in my collection and for me to be able to touch it and do a YouTube review talking about it, um, it just does feel really surreal, like a very, very long journey, you know, because it's something... I don't want to say that I was actively looking for it for 22 years because that's not the case, but I have, I've wanted it. I've definitely wanted it for 22 years. Um, and, you know, just the time and the budget and the circumstances never came together. Um, either I was after something else and trying to set aside money to get that, or, you know, the, this just simply wasn't available. And then finally, on top of that, my reluctance to get anywhere close to buying one of these where you have to ship it. Uh, and there were others where it was broken, and even though it was broken with a broken arm and a poorly repaired arm, they're still trying to sell for top dollar. So there's just a lot of factors that kept me from really, you know, obtaining this piece, even though it was one of the pieces I did really want to get from my younger days. You know, back in 2001, um, I just started, um, actually, surgical residency. I just graduated medical school. And so 2021 to now, that I think about that, that was like 23 years ago. You know, so I always kind of uh, wanted something like that. And it just feels, again, um, very surreal to finally have it in front of my eyes, to be able to touch it, to be able to turn it around on a turntable, to be able to just you know, admire all the little things about the statue. And uh, while sure, you know, I, I feel like um, statues have become, you know, way more sophisticated, way more complicated, way more detailed, way more parts. Um, nostalgia. And I don't know whether this is truly nostalgia. Like, I don't know whether my feelings for this piece is from just nostalgia or from the fact that it is just really, really good. Um, you know, I do still, you know, so much appreciate a piece like this in its simplicity, you know, where you can actually feel the power of the cave troll and uh, feel the message, so to speak, that's being uh, delivered. And uh, I think it's a fantastic piece, fantastic pose. It really gives you a sense of the power of the animal. But then we look at the eyes and the uh, portrait. It also, you know, kind of gives you a little hint that maybe there should also be some empathy 
for him as well. He's not just a monster, you know. He's not, is he evil or is he just, you know, dim-witted and territorial and being used by the orcs? So it's hard to say based on that. This is still like a great piece even today. So can you just imagine what people thought when they got this thing back in 2002, 2003? I mean, definitely a pillar of the entire Sideshow Weta collection, along with the Balrog and the Witch King, you know? So I'm just gonna turn this slowly around so you have a chance to sort of stop anytime you want and check out this piece. By the way, um, this is like the first real review of the Sashawada Cave Troll on YouTube. I looked so far and so wide, but all those reviews are of the 20th anniversary Cave Troll. But ones of the OG like this one, not very often. I think there's one, I think, to try to sell or advertise for a listing on eBay. There was another one that was about, you know, maybe two to three minutes. Certainly not a lot of conversation. Uh, and so I think this is like the first real, you know, full-length, detailed review of this um, Sideshow Weta work of art, this Sideshow Weta classic. So I'm hopefully, you know, as I'm backing up and turning him around, you're going to be able to see what this guy looks like from all different directions and appreciate sort of the artistry and the mastery to create something like this. And of course, he was done by the uh, sculptors and the, the, the motors and the cast and the painters that worked on the original Fellowship of the Ring. So again, uh, that's true authenticity. So there you have it. And I'm gonna try to get a little bit closer. Just look at it from multiple angles. Again, part of the reason for the review is to just give you guys a chance to look at it in all its beauty and to look at it from perspectives and distances that you would never, almost uh, never get from another, you know, video because they're not about to do 30, 40 minute videos. They're there to make the money. Just take a look at the texture of this mace and the rock. Pretty awesome. The skull we talked about. Look at that. Look at the shaft with the heavy, you know, spikes almost. And then his uh, loincloth, made out of leather. Just a beautiful all around. All right, let me see if I can actually do the macro. So here we go. There you go. When you see that, that means that we switched cameras. So we should be able to go macro without too much trouble. Bird's eye view. In terms of the close-ups, all you really need after all are the texture of his back and then a little bit of the ear, his face, of course, the mace. I can do a little close up of the skull now so you can actually see what the heck that looks like. Look at the nail. So much like an elephant or rhinoceros. I'm sure that, that they took inspiration from that. And you can see kind of how thick those nails are. Look at that. Love it. We're gonna go back to what X, switching back to the 4K camera. So there you have it. I'm gonna freeze frame right over here. Um, and I guess I'll end on this, which is um, which, what do I think, what do I think about this cave troll, you know, versus the 20th anniversary one? We'll drink a little water. Well, you know, it is a little bit tricky. Um, there's always recency bias, 
where the most recent piece sometimes makes you think like um, that one is better, you know? Uh, certainly the 20th century cave troll is essentially identical in size. Um, it's one six scale. It's the same cave troll, but it has like a more dynamic pose and it has the two Moria orcs. Now, some people don't like them because they feel like it distracts from the cave troll itself. But I think I mentioned in my review that I, for one, love the Moria orcs because I really love the design of the orcs. And, you know, of course, they were fighting with the cave troll in the Fellowship of the Ring. Um, I love the a little bit of cheekiness where they have one, like, you know, literally riding on him as if he's riding a rhino, as if he's riding an elephant. Um, so I think that the art design of the anniversary edition, you know, uh, is superior to this original because it's so, so basic. Uh, you know, again, from 20, 20 years, two decades ago, when a statue, you know, making art design of statues was just in its infancy, really. So I do like the, um, the new Cave Trolls pose. Um, I like, again, that art design. I like the or orcs. I like that better. Um, I don't like the fact that the new one has his right arm, you know, with the huge stone mace attached, just sort of being flung out. I think there's ways of doing homage to this character um, without having to give him weird poses or to, to do these type of things, um, you know. But, I mean, this is, of course, iconic. We see him, the first thing we see of him is he crashes through the door and swings this club and just destroys the doorway. And as they assault, um, you know, the fellowship around Balin's uh, tomb, um, so I like that. Um, I think that the paint app, believe it or not, is about equal. I mean, um, there was a lot of complaints about the paint app for the anniversary edition cave troll. They felt that there were some parts that were underpainted, very, very, um, dull, you know, no texturing. But as you can see from the original cave troll from Sasha Weta, I mean, he's a cave troll. He's gray. He's in the, you know, he's in the caves. There's no sunlight. Uh, all you see are wrinkles with a little bit of highlights of those and then, you know, the, the more, um, the less dark, you know, coloration of the of his uh, uh, ventral, uh, of his dorsal, what is the ventral? No, the ventral, yeah, of the ventral surface. Um, and then, of course, the darker paint of the, of the dorsal cobblestones and pebbles of the back, that texturing. Uh, but it's pretty simple, you know, and so I would say that in terms of the paint application, the, um, the two are are not too far off. Um, you know, of course, the people who sculpted this cave troll likely worked on him as well, and they brought back some people, you know, who had worked on this original cave troll to do the new one for the 20th anniversary. So not a lot of um, complaint there. And so that's kind of, you know, how I feel. But at the end of the day, there is something a little bit special about this cave troll um, it just feels, and it probably has to do with the club or mace uh, on the ground and the, you know, the surrounding indentation showing you how heavy it is. But it just seems that this um, particular version, when I look at it, it just seems to hold more weight, which is pretty hilarious because we know uh, that the majority of this bad boy is hollow cast. Uh, and yet, you know, it feels like it has more weight than the other 20th century cave troll. There's more power, more mass, um, more strength. You just feel sort of the solidity um, and the raw strength of the ogre. And I think you feel that more with this piece, um, probably because of the pose, because of the, the expression, because of the way they kind of sculpt around the clubs, you can get a sense for the weight of it all. Um, so I kind of actually prefer this OG cave troll because of that. You know, um, sometimes the newer pieces you feel maybe get a little bit overly engineered. They're trying to overly complicate it. And while I personally love the Moria arcs, uh, the Moria orcs, I know that a lot of, you know, diehard Lord of the Rings fans were not that happy with it. Um, but, you know, I feel like that cave troll, just because of the, um, just because of the the pose that that they decided to sculpt him in, and also have a orc riding him, um, while that's still really intimidating, uh, I feel like there's there's more with this piece. You know, like it gives you more of that sensation 
of raw power than the other cave troll where you know it looks like he's about to start a rampage um, but to be honest I love both of them but in terms of the actual like solidity if that's the word and power and strength um, I do go for the OG cave troll so uh, I'm you know my other my OG my uh, not OG my 20th, 20th anniversary cave troll is kind of hard to reach right now it's back behind a whole bunch of other statues in front of it um, and they're both massive so it will take some time but for sure eventually um, I am going to make another video with the two of them side by side so we can really really do a nice comparison about what they look like their their strength patterns um, I don't know how you know obviously obviously to knock um, you know like when you look at all of this stuff together uh, sorry I got a little bit distracted I was thinking about other things but um, yeah you know when you um, when I'm definitely gonna make a, a video comparing um, the two cave trolls the 20th uh, anniversary one as well as the OG one and then when you actually have the two side by side you're really gonna be able to you know be able to look at the pose the sculpt the details as well as the paint apps and all that stuff it's past midnight here when I've been doing this so sorry for the little mini stroke I had I was uh, thinking about something else and kind of sleepy so I started, started talking about one of my video games but in reality I kind of lost my train of thought but yeah I was gonna um, I was like in the middle talking about a future video but yeah that future video is gonna be um, a comparison of the two and again this is so big I'm gonna need some time time to get the other statue out from where it's behind a whole bunch of others and I'll probably have to move the venue over to my uh, kitchen you know table it's gonna have the surface area to be able to actually have these two guys next to each other so there you have it you know after 20 plus years finally got to review and touch and uh, feel um, you know like the OG cave truck just still kind of you know, in shock that I actually own this. I'm just so grateful to the collector, you know, who loved this piece for 20 years, kept it in such good shape, and then, um, you know, uh, delivered it to me, driving two and a half plus hours from the San Diego area to my place to put it safely in my hand. Uh, couldn't be happier, couldn't be more grateful for that opportunity. And so, yeah, it's a, a journey of 20 plus years, just like with the Bob of Moria, you know, but that journey is, is over, I have this. And so uh, I'm glad to kind of share that with you and share my thoughts with you about this uh, piece. And hopefully um, this is a situation where I've rotated them so many times and gone in and out uh, that for the first time on YouTube, we finally have a video that you know, can, that really, really dwells on on this um, statue and gives it the love and attention and time it deserves. So for those of you who aren't going to be able to get it, who ne or who've decided that never will be able to, you can always look at this video to get an idea of how beautiful this is and what it looks like and seeing him from all different angles. So you have some idea of kind of the space that he occupies and seeing him from non-traditional uh, angles as well. So there you have it. It's almost 50 minutes. Um, until next time, I hope you enjoyed this review. Take care of yourself. Until next time, do take care.